Save Our Planet called land clearing to preserve biodiversity. During the recent International Climate Adaptation Futures Conference that ended Thursday, July 1st in Brisbane, Australia, United Nations Environment Program or UNEP Chief Scientist Dr. Joseph Alcamo urged for further tangible goals to protect biodiversity loss. His call followed a vote by UNEP nations earlier in June to establish a new intergovernmental platform on biodiversity and ecosystems in light of the gravity of such issues as they are linked strongly to human survival. In the face of alarming declines of animal and plant species worldwide due to human activities and climate change, Dr. Alcamo added that an ideal strategy would be to focus on setting limits for human impacts to entire ecosystems, rather than attempting to protect individual species based on their chance for recovery. He suggested, for example, reducing land use changes such as deforestation to protect habitats. According to Dr. Clive McAlpine, environmental researcher at the University of Queensland, land clearing through deforestation has been observed to have a large impact on Australia's biodiversity. When you look at uh, landscapes like in Western Australia, southwest Western Australia, New South Wales, and Victoria, and in Queensland, that amounts to some areas in Western. 10% or even 5% native vegetation remaining. So there's very extensive clearing in those areas and that's you know, had major impacts for biodiversity and also for catchment hydrology and for, and for feedbacks on climate. Professor McAlpine explained that the foremost reason for Australia's rapid and dramatic removal of trees has been for agriculture and livestock grazing. Trees compete with grasses for moisture and nutrients as a result Farmers have gone out to large areas and converted that into uh, new, new crops and pastures. To save the environment, Professor McAlpine emphasized that it is vital to restore wildlife habitats and address such land use issues along with climate change. If we focus purely on climate change and greenhouse gases without looking at land use, including beef cattle grazing and other forms of livestock grazing, then we're still going to have uh, you know, problems further down the track. So we need to address them all collectively and try and get to some sort of uh, sustainable ranges in the future. Many thanks, Professor McAlvine, for your insights on the interrelatedness of deforestation, biodiversity loss, and livestock grazing. May wise government policies and individual actions together prevent a further demise of the remaining ecosystems on which we all depend. In an interview published in the September 2009 edition of The House magazine, Supreme Master Ching Hai addressed the very issue of how livestock agriculture is impacting the ecosphere. On land, meat consumption is responsible for vast regions being clear for grazing crops that are fed to livestock, with these activities essentially robbing our biodiversity. There has been an alarming rise in the disappearance of plants and animals. Besides the land being clear for livestock grazing, the livestock itself causes further biodiversity loss due to potent greenhouse gas emissions, which accelerate global warming. The answer to all this, you know, is quite clear. Stop the meat consumption. Stop it yesterday. This will eliminate the so-called need for livestock raising, which will immediately return immense amounts of land to natural sustainability or to natural growing methods that allow biodiversity to be replenished. This is the way we need to go, and fast. <laughs>